History of the Secret Space Program. Top layer of pockets before Agartha Inner Earth. When you first saw it and you were made aware of the Inner Earth, what did, what did you think? Did, did it trip you out? Well, I think the biggest surprise was I didn't know there were that many uh, hollow points of the Earth because I was taught, you know, there's a core and it's magma and this and the crust and all these layers and it's not like that at all. It's more like a honeycomb. There's like all these areas, you yeah. know, and all these aquifers and there's all these huge pockets of life that are, that are, you know, flourishing down there. You know, for me, I felt like, wow, these are like, it's like another planet within a planet, to be honest. Did they take you down there into the uh, inner earth? I've been there through portals, uh, yes. Why? What's down there? Well, for you? mostly just collecting specimens, kind of like what we were doing a while ago with going to different planets. How, how far down did you go into the planet? Yeah, I really don't know uh, exactly. They never really kind of I mean, told us that. Did you feel heat that. or anything like that? Um, no, I was never overheated. Um, it was very actually uh, a constant 55 degrees or uh, and some of the civilization, like the actual ecosystems were around uh, 80 degrees. So they were warm because I think these systems, the way they're allowed to flourish is some of those veins of magma or whatever are surrounding them yeah. and keeping it just at the right specific temperature for life to flourish down there. Did you see oceans? Uh, I've seen giant like lakes, but not oceans. Underwater yes. or underground, I've you seen, saw lakes. I've seen saltwater lakes and freshwater lakes. There was lots of light everywhere. There's a lot of light emitting plants and animals and the moisture in the air, like I told you, or in, in other episodes, is is bioluminescent. Just the the floating water particles have some sort of chemical in them that every it's always lit up. Now there was a time I saw in a, a rainbow atmosphere in one of these places a very bright light. Really, it, uh, at like the top of the ceiling. Of well, this don't thing. you have to have like a little star sun in order to have a rainbow? Well, they fit right. This is what it was a prism effect is what they figured. You know, they figured this out. And that's why it, it casted this rainbow like uh, light across the uh, top of this humongous, you know, cavern. I mean, I can't, sure. it, it, it looks like it's infinity. So what they found out was there was a somehow a ball of this water that was uh, ant, you know, anti-gravitic that was just up way up high in this area that the light that was around was making this effect going through it. Interesting. Now, you and your team went into the inner Earth. What was the mission and how did you get there? Well, we used portal technology and uh, there'd be anywhere from 10 to 15 people uh, in, in the group. Once you get into the inner earth, how do you move around? Do you walk? Do you drive? What do you do? Yeah, we uh, basically hike the whole way. I mean, it's all, all on, on foot. All on foot. All on foot. I mean, some of these places are, are so vast. They're many, many, many miles. Uh, I know the, one of the longest ones I remember was about six miles in diameter. That's pretty hefty. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, everything's on foot. Uh, we do have assistance with special types of robots and other uh, cybernetic type uh, beings. Why don't you give you like a golf cart, something like that, just to move around? Well, the whole thing is Jaggedy? also, you don't want to damage and ruin any, uh, you know, you don't want to leave a trace behind, you know? It's kind of like going into a national park. Pack in and pack everything out. You know, don't leave a candy wrapper, 